Hello, let's talk about social democracy. This term is used a lot, and I think it's mostly misused. I'm kind of guilty of it myself, because it's just sort of like an easy, short-form term. But at the end of the day, most of us are heavily misusing it. We essentially use it as sort of like a synonym for just a welfare state. But that's not really what social democracy is. Now, historically, social democracy was um, considered to be a lot more radical than it actually is today. It was essentially using the state apparatus to us to like completely favor the workers. Obviously, that's not the case today at all. No one would ever say that social democracy is explicitly using the state to favor the working class over others. That's just, you know, not really what it is at all. So I just want to talk about the actual characteristics of social democracy today, because usually if we see like some welfare programs, you know, so like public health care or something, we're like, oh, that must be a social democracy. But that's not really the case. For example, look at Cuba. Would you call Cuba a social democracy? It has public health care. It has welfare programs, all, the, all that sort of stuff. But um, it lacks a lot of the fundamentals of what makes a social democracy a social democracy. Because at the core of what we understand social democracy as today, it's not those things at all, really. You could have a so-called social democracy without any of those things, perhaps depending on um, on whether whether the state thinks it can get away with not giving you them. Because at the core of this so-called social democracy is much more the state at the behest of the bourgeoisie turning itself into sort of this um, illusory mediator between the working class and the owning class, which is called Corporatism. Yeah, most of the so-called modern social democracies have a whole lot in common with um, Mussolini, just to let you know. So the state sets up this sort of regulatory apparatus, which is made to look like, you know, that they're, they're giving workers a seat at the table with the capitalists and giving everyone a fair shake. So they say, OK, we're going to have some unions. These are the unions that you're allowed to have. This is when you're allowed to strike. Any other strike is illegal. If you have any problems at the workplace with your pay or whatever, your only option is to join this union and then go to the bargaining table and negotiate with the representatives of the owners. Anything else is illegal. You're only allowed to strike um, if negotiations break down. Stuff like that. And that is really the fundamental of social democracy. This illusory fake notion of class compromise, which obviously isn't really class compromise, is it? Because at the end of the day, what's at stake for the owners of capital is a little bit of lost profit. What's at stake for the worker is losing their whole livelihood. So the workers in this case, where they're forced to the bargaining table, forced to have like you know, like, um, nice discussions with the bosses, they're gonna lose out every single time. Even in the cases where it seems like they might have won, it's really not a win at all. Like, you know, you go to the bargaining table with your boss, you get like a, a $2 an hour pay rise. That's not really shit. Nothing has fundamentally changed there. You know, the relation between capital and the worker remains the exact same as it was before. You're still working to make money for them, and anything that they end up giving you is always going to be something that they were prepared to give you. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are fundamentally in control of the state, they're the ones who set up this system in the first place in order to funnel sort of revolutionary energy into something else, in order to give you just enough of the scraps so that you don't do anything that actually really threatens them. And one thing that I haven't really touched on here is that obviously, you know, when union participation is so heavily limited by the state, these unions are effectively just captured by the state, the state which is operating at the behest of the capitalists. So not only are workers obviously operating at a massive disadvantage in the first place, but their unions aren't even theirs. So it's all one big con. It's called class compromise, but at the end of the day, one side has all the power and, and the complete control of the state apparatus. And it's all about making it seem like you're getting your fair share when you're really getting not even remotely close to what your fair share would be. And that last phrase there, that's really the crux of social democracy. It's not have some welfare payments, you know, go to the public hospital, it's fine. It's the capitalists trying to keep you placated with as little as they possibly can to make sure you don't do anything that actually threatens them. And anyone who explicitly identifies as a social democrat that's what they're identifying as. Not a true belief in the system, because no one truly believes in social democracy. Not even the people who set it up truly believe in it. Not, in the, not even the social democrats themselves truly believe in it. 
for them, it's a means to an end. It's a means to keep you going to work, going home, and then going to work the next day ad nauseum without causing any trouble. Because without these corporatist mechanisms in place to sort of mislead you and other workers and make you think that you're getting your fair share, that everything's all well and good, that you're well and truly the beneficiary of a compromise, you won't realize that you could really get a whole, whole, whole lot more if you and your buddies operated outside of the bounds of this system. So yeah, social democracy is not welfare programs. It's not public services. Social Democrats would give you none of that if they thought they could get away with it. Social democracy is fundamentally about discouraging working class militancy by throwing them some scraps and putting up a facade of like reasonable compromise. And even that is of course in the first world all based on the exploitation of the third. You get your scraps from imperialism, shut up. And unfortunately most workers in the first world fall for it hook, line and sinker. So yeah that's what I wanted to talk about and just sort of off the cuff here. Hope it didn't come off too stupid. See ya!